This morning. So come on, let's give him our all. Hallelujah. Woo! We are running, running and chasing after all that you are, Lord. Your name will 
pressing on towards that day we're never gonna stop never gonna stop letting go of every mistake throwing off the chains of restraint all that will remain a passion for your name burning as we run this race we're never gonna stop we're never gonna stop We're never gonna stop We're never gonna stop We are running Chasing after all that you are We are running It's all that you are It's all that we want Every step compelled by your grace We're taking up our cross No matter what the cost We give it all to go your way We're never gonna stop We're never gonna stop We are running Chasing after all that you are We are running Beyond ourselves To your love To your love Onward Onwards we draw towards your light Desperate we seek to know you more and more Ever we look beyond ourselves To your love To your love We are running Come on Chasing after all that you are We are running Everybody bring your tennis shoes this morning. Praise the Lord. How many of y'all glad you run in your race? Amen. Full speed ahead, not jogging, not half stepping. Amen. But you're running full speed ahead. Amen. Miss Thelma, where's Miss Thelma? She in here right now. Praise the Lord. Miss Thelma, you come over here. Stephanie, you come here just a second. Praise the Lord. We're going to agree. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Danielle, you can stand right here, right over here. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can all face me. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, you can face me too. We're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Father, healing power of God in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, whatever we bind is bound. Whatever we loose is loosed. Command healing into her body right now in the name of Jesus. Call her body healed right now. 
healed right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Any pain has to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Call you blessed. Call you free. Call you healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that by your stripes she was healed. We thank you, Father, you're the Lord God that heals us. We thank you, Father, you sent your word and healed us and delivered us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we rejoice at your word as one who found great treasure in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, Father, right now we just, hallelujah, don't y'all be in agreement with me right now for... Danielle and all of her nurses she works with, there was a nurse that worked with her uh, every day that passed away yesterday, I think, or was it this morning? Yesterday. And we're just going to lift up the whole nursing crew there at Sacred Heart and the family, everyone involved. We thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Your word says you're an ever-present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up, Father God, the family. We thank you, Father God. We speak peace and strength into their lives. We thank you for supernatural strength. We thank you, Father God, that you quicken us. We thank you, Father, you strengthen us. We thank you, Father God, you, Father God, give them supernatural wisdom and peace and strength, the peace of God that passes all understanding. We thank you, Father God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father God, this will be an open door, Father God, for Danielle to minister the Word of God at the hospital. And we thank you, Father God, that we have a word in due season for all that are weary. And we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, that we open our mouth wide, you'll fill it. But, Father God, we thank you that you cleanse, Father God, and you strengthen her heart in the name of Jesus. We call right now, Father God, the peace of God and the supernatural strength of God into her in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father God, right now. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Glorify you. And we thank you, Father God, right now that her family is strong. We thank you, Father God, you send forth laborers across their path to witness to them the good word of God in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God. We call that done right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that your word says, pray the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest field. We thank you, Father God, right now we have laborers going forth into the harvest in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, rejoice. The Word's working. Amen. Hallelujah. The Word is alive, living and active, working and mighty in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, you may be seated. I believe we have an announcement or two. Praise God.
Amen. Good job on the announcements there, brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just, uh, sometimes we got to help people on signing in their kids. We kind of just drop them off, let them go. They're here. They're in the building. We got them in the building, let them go. So we just figured it'd be a good uh, help to show you a little video there on how to get that done. You can turn those on if you want to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right, Daniel had another announcement. We need a couple of men, maybe. Is it men we need? Probably are, are strong women. Amen. To help uh, pick up some boxes in the uh, Christmas decoration there where we had everything stored. We want some help picking that up and taking it out to storage uh, after service. It's in this room right over here. So if you could do that, that would be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. One more announcement I have. Our, our giving records are in and they're in the coffee room, except we're going to take them up real fast. We just, uh, last Wednesday night, I found out that um, when we moved into this building, September first though first week or so we were here there's about three services three maybe four probably three services and one of them was a very big service how many of y'all remember the first time we came to this building and uh, we had that twelve thirteen thousand dollar offer and i believe it was those records are uh somewhere in this building and uh, we found out those weren't in there and about two more services that the filing cabinet went from parton to here and there's things it is in the building. Amen. So give us, if you have to run and do your taxes right now, and if you're going to go ahead, you can go. If you have records of your giving, give that to us. We'll insert it into the computer, and we'll make everything right on that. Or, you know, out of the 105, 107 services, you might be missing three services, and that's, uh, that, uh, that's not going to be the way it is because we're going to stay up here and search every room until we find it this week. Amen. Hallelujah. But your giving records are out there. That's a big deal for some people. And uh, some people, that's a whole lot of money, three services. Some people, you want to make sure that you, uh, that, that you give and that you get your records if you do that. Some people say it doesn't matter to me if I have my records or not. You know, it doesn't matter. So they're, they're there. Are we going to leave them out? Is everybody, I don't know if it would affect everybody, but uh, we might just take up what we have and just put out new ones Wednesday night. And uh, that would be a good deal. So turn in your Bibles to Malachi, if you would. Taking up the offering this morning. Good to see everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody shout one time. Yeah, I want to make sure everybody's awake. Everybody rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. And again, I say rejoice. Praise God. Malachi, Malachi, last book of the New Testament. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody ready to give this morning? Praise the Lord. Tim, if you could put the 18-wheeler uh, on the screen real quick, praise God. Hallelujah. We cast some vision last week and talked a little bit about it Wednesday night. And uh, the part of it, this is long-term vision. This isn't next week. And it's not even, I didn't, I shared Dan, with Danielle last night at uh, dinner some other things that I have on my heart as well that I didn't share at all in our vision. You don't always let every cat out of the bag at one time. Amen. Hallelujah. So we, sh we was talking about some things, and we just went on even down the road, what we see really, really coming. But uh, our whole vision here and our whole mission is to do church outside the church. Amen? Amen? Not about coming in here just preaching to church people and just about building up church people so we can get built up, go home, come back, get built up. Now we're to take the gospel to the what? World. Amen? The Bible says, go ye into what? All the world and preach the Good news, the gospel. How many of y'all glad we have good news for the world around us? Amen. Yeah, amen. The 18-wheelers, we have another one with bouncy houses, at that, and we've cast this about a year ago. And uh, you can go to that one, Tim, just fast. This is just some of you weren't here last week. This is uh, probably, this could happen here real quickly, actually. Amen. How many of y'all think God can do things fast? Amen. I, lot of, I, I, I know he can. Amen. I know what he's already done in three years, and I'm not, af I'm not afraid of what he's saying he's going to do in the next three. Amen. The next three is going to be bigger than the last three. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we're going we're gonna to have him, we're going to come into neighborhoods in that 18-wheeler, drop it down. We're going to have a stage in there. We're going to have inflatables in there. We're going to show up, and we're gonna, not just going to preach good news. Amen. We're going to show them that God is what? Good. Amen. In many different ways. How many of y'all seen the outreaches we do, and you go in there, and you just see the whole town almost just lights up. Amen. Just like, glory to God. God's good. You go, it's free. This free. That's free. That's free. That's free. This is all free right here. Amen. How many of y'all think that God's, God so loved the world that he gave? And the church should so love somebody that they what? Give. Amen. And our whole mission here is to go out and to be a blessing in the community. Amen. 
Glory to God. Well, Wednesday night we started talking about, no, don't, don't show too much. Now, they might, yeah, they weren't here last week. They had to get the, they had to go watch on YouTube, amen. But Malachi chapter 3, we talked Wednesday night about executing the vision. A lot of times what, what will happen in the body of Christ, a pastor will cast vision. This is how we're going to get it done. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is the dream we have. This is what we're going to see happen. And then we don't talk about executing the vision, amen. I mean, I know a coach gives a game plan. You got the Super Bowl coming up when? Next Sunday. And the coach is going to put the game plan out there in front of the players. A lot of X's, a lot of O's on the screen. Everybody has their job to do. The coach can have the vision and the plan, but the players have to execute it. Amen? The body of Christ, God gives vision to a local church, to a local pastor, and then the body in that church executes the vision. Amen? How many of y'all know that right there? None of that stuff happens with just us coming up here preaching the word. Amen. It has to be people that are doers of the word that jump in, grab hold of the vision and say, I I, I believe I can run with that. Amen. And I said the other day, find somewhere you can run with the vision of the church. Amen. You don't go to church just where your friends go. You don't go where your kids have fun at. You go where you get fed at and I can run with that vision. Amen. And that is where you choose and that's where I go. And you know what? I can take and we can run with the gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Malachi chapter 3, we're going to start reading. I believe it's verse 6. Say Malachi. You ought to know where Malachi is. It's last in the New Testament, amen? I mean, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Just correct me, Mildred, quickly. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 6, verse 6. It says, for I am the Lord, I change what? I change what? Nah, everything I'm about to tell you is never going to what? Change. I am the Lord and I change not. Amen. And he is about to start talking to the church here. And he's about to start talking to them about something that is not going to change. See, a lot of people think that the tithe has changed. Bring the tithe. I saw a, a local website, actually. I was looking, I always look around at local websites, and there was a question on a local website that says, do you tithe there, and are, am I going to be asked to tithe at this church? And the, uh, whoever, I guess, pastor, the minister, or whoever's in charge of the church, wrote below that, absolutely not. You just do whatever you want to do. Amen. Not going to be too hard, amen, but preach the word. Say amen. You don't do what you want to do, amen. Say amen. You don't just do what you want to do. We are believers, amen. We believe something, amen. We believe the what? Book. I believe the Bible. How many of y'all believe the Bible? And Jesus, God says right here, I am the Lord. I change what? I'm changing not, amen. I'm not going to change. Not for anybody, amen. Not going to make a special deal with somebody because they think they want a special deal. God said this isn't going to change ever. Say amen. Watch this. Keep reading. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore the sons of Jacob are consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinance. Left my word. (laughs) From your what? Youth. How many of y'all remember your youth? Left the word. Watch what it says. And have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? And then the Lord said, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed you? In tithes and what? Offerings. Say Bible. See, a lot of people want to pick and choose the parts of the Bible they want to read. But how many of y'all know it's good to read all of it? And God says right here, you have robbed me in what? Tithes and what? Offerings. Tithes what? And offerings. Amen. See, a lot of times we take up two offerings here, two, uh, two times, and a lot of people got issue with that. But the Bible talks about tithes and offerings. Say amen. They're not the same thing. Amen. You can't write an offering and call it your tithe, and you can't write a tithe and call it your offering. I even heard some people say one time that, you know what, I want to get to where I'm tithing 30%. It's not possible because it don't line up with the word. Amen. I heard a lot of people, I want to be a tither of 50%. Tithe by definition means tenth. So how are you going to tenth 30%? Amen. You're going to tenth a tenth. Amen. Everything else over and above your tithe is your what? Offering. Amen. So really you you should just say, I want to be a 30% giver. Amen. 
I want to give 30%. It sounds good, but you know what? Your tithe is set. You don't pray about your tithe. Say amen. There's not something I hear people say, well, I'm going to pray about what I'm going to tithe this week. It's real easy. It's what? It's a 10. And you're going to obey or you're going to disobey. You're going to say, you know what? I'm going to do that or I'm not going to do that. But it says right here that when you don't do it, God says you are doing what? Robbing me. And it's not about the money. Say this. The tithe is not about money. Not about money. It's about the heart. Amen. God wants our heart. He does not need our money. He got gold streets in heaven, mansions everywhere, and he don't need our money. But he says, you're robbing me when you withhold your tithe, withhold your giving. You're not hurting me, and you're not hurting the church. Do you know we've had people say, you know what, I, think I'm on, I don't think I'm going to be a tither. I don't think I'm going to tithe. You know what, it don't hurt us at all. We keep getting new stuff, doing new things, go and do outreaches. We always going to get our bills paid. God supplies our needs. Amen. But if you think you're, God's going to finagle a plan for you and say, you know what, Lord, I, I, I need this. And he says, no, you're withholding and you're robbing from me. What is he robbing from him from? Watch this. Will a man rob God? Yet you say this, I have withheld tithes and what? Offerings. You are cursed with a curse. The only part of this scripture that has changed. Because the Bible says Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How many of y'all know that there is no curse anymore? Say amen. There is no curse anymore. Don't listen to a preacher say, well, if you don't tithe, the Lord's going to break your car down, mess up your stuff, bust your stuff off. No, there's no curse anymore. But I like how Pastor Mark Hankins says it. He said this. He said the curse in the New Testament might mean not that something bad happens to you, but that something good is not happening for you. Now, that is the case in most people's case right here. There's not something bad happening. It's something good that didn't happen. Amen. How many of y'all tithers in here right now? Praise the Lord. You know that you know you're a tither. You're not just a giver. You don't just write checks and say I'm a tither. You know that you know. You know how much it is. You're right. I'm, I'm tithing off this much right here. Amen. Watch this right here. Here's where they're, they're, they are robbing God. Because we think that sounds rough and hard. What, watch what they're robbing God from. You're cursed with the curse. You rob me, even this whole nation. Bring ye what? All the what? tithe into the what store house that there may be meat in what my house say my house see God said you bring the tithe and you bring it somewhere you bring it to the local storehouse say amen you don't pick and choose what you do with the tithe you don't tithe to who you feel like tithing to he said you bring the tithe into what my house say amen that there may be meat, provision in the house of God. Amen. How many of y'all think that the house of God he is feeding you in is a great place for there to be more than enough provision, meat, substance here for you to come in and partake. Amen. Hallelujah. And God says right here, here's why I want you to bring what? Say all. All of the what? Tent. Say tent. Tent. So we're going to do something different for the next three weeks. We're going to take up two offerings. We normally do a lot of time anyway. We're raising money for buildings and everything. I don't want you to give a dime in this first offering if it's not tithe offering. We're going to take up the tithe and offering today. But we're going to do tithe first. We're going to do offering second. Say amen. We're going to do just like they did in the Bible. Amen. What y'all doing? Well, we're going to do it just like they did. If it's not a tenth, if you made $2,000 this week, just write $200. Amen. If you made $5,752, write it for $572. Amen. Just to the T. Amen. Let's go ahead and do what they did in the Bible. Because God said this, I'm the Lord, I what? Change not. And it's so cool why God wants to take a tenth of everything. Because God, how many of y'all think, some people think, well, it'd be good if it was just a flat rate. I just do a flat rate. That's what I want, a flat rate. Now God wants to be a partner in a percentage with you. How many of y'all think God is a good businessman? And a good businessman don't say, I'll just take, see, you're not now working for God, you're working with God. See, the tithe makes you now partners with him. So if you're tithing off 300 every week and he gets 30 every week, what if he increases you to 3,000 a week? A good business partner says, I'm a 10% partner with you in everything you do. That now means God is involved in everything you do. 
Oh, now, why do I tithe? I am partners with God. Amen. I mean my 30000 You know what? He's getting three right off the top, and then I'm going to pray about the offering I give him. Amen. How many of y'all think God is pretty sharp on how he wants us giving? Amen. Now, your offering goes over and above that 10%, but if God says, and I like what God says, bring ye what? All the tithe. Look at what he says. He says, bring all the tithes. He said, you robbed me in tithes, what? And offerings. But he said, we can't deal with the offering until we deal with the what? So you can't give an offering until you give a tithe. Say amen. See, guys, so first we've got to deal with the tithe, then we can deal with the offering. Say amen. See, we've got to deal with this because Christmas time, we took up all the money for the kids and stuff like that, and our Christmas offering was the lowest offering we've ever had at this church, even in the other building. Even in the other building. And what we figured out is people said, well, you know what, I'm going to tithe, but I'm going to give my money toward the gifts. Amen? But how many of y'all know God's good and he still supplied everything that we needed? Amen? We had the part, had everything, paid the building, everything's done. Amen? But really, that is not, you don't allocate your tithe toward your offering. Amen? Say amen. And God always will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. Amen. And what happens is I, I'm sitting there and I'm a little frustrated. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? He said, Roddy, it is your fault. I said, well, they ought to know. They ought to know that you can't do that. You got to give. We got stuff to do. We got bills to pay. We got all this stuff. They ought to know better than that. He said, why? He said, you got to teach. Amen. And if you don't teach, see, my people perish for a lack of what? Knowledge. And see, here's what God is robbed of. Go look. Let's get that. Let's go on. Go on. Go on. Bring ye all the tithe into my storehouse, that there may be meat in what? My house. Test me and prove me herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing, you will not have room to receive it. How many of y'all believe the book? So what are you robbing God from? You're not taking and robbing God from money. You're robbing Him from opportunity to do what He wants to do more than anything, and that's blessed. God is a good God. God blesses. God is not. See, what you're doing, I'm, I'm, I'm robbing God of his money. You know what? No, you're robbing him of an opportunity to pour out blessing. Because God wants to bless us more than what? Anything. Say amen. So the tithe is not something that we even touch. Amen. That's God's. That's his. I'm not messing with it. That's a tenth. You know what? You don't have to believe it, but it's still in the book. And Jesus didn't change it. Jesus in Matthew 6 went up, uh, on the Sermon of the Mount. He said, you know what you've heard? That is said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you, anyone that looks at a woman lustfully, he's committed adultery in his heart already. You know it said, do not murder. But I tell you, if you've even become angry with a friend, a friend of yours, you've committed murder in your heart. He had all of this Sermon on the Mount to change a lot of things about the tithe, and he never touched it. How many of y'all think he ever, he never, he, he never mentioned the tithe in Matthew 6? Never mentioned it. It didn't change, and it's not going to change. And God says, if you are just dare, double dog dare yourself to be a tither. He says, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing that you can't receive. Say amen. Amen. We're going to take up the tithe right now. Say the tithe. Say, I'm a tither. Amen. Say it boldly. I'm a tither. I tithe. Say, I tithe on everything that comes in. And my God opens up windows of heaven above me, the blessing of God is in excess so much i can't handle all of it so much to do so much opportunity comes my way i am a tither and a giver over and above i am blessed to be a blessing this is my tithe now you may have already made out your check a lot of people here make out tithe and offer they write on the bottom this is my tithe and my offer that's fine. If you've already done that, go ahead and do that. But what we're going to do for a few weeks, I want to take up two separate. I want to take up tithes and offers. Tithes and offers. Amen. And see, here's the deal. When it gets good when it gets on over into your offering. Amen. How many of y'all know once you get over and above and God says, you know what, now if you'll bring an offering also, the Bible says this, that God will multiply your seed sown. Amen. A lot of people think, well, I'm sowing seed. Well, you're not sowing seed until you take care of the first part. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you now. We thank you, Father God. Every need in this church is met. Everything here is accomplished that you've called us to accomplish in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the vision is coming to pass. We thank you, Father God. You've given us your word on how to bring it to pass. And we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. We are receiving so much blessing, so much opportunity, so much favor. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that we have no room to receive all of the favor in the name of Jesus. Everybody say it. Amen.
Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. We thank you, Father, we're not sinners saved by grace. We thank you we're the righteousness of God in you. And we thank you, Father God, that he who knew most sin became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. And we thank you, Father, we're worthy in you. We thank you we're righteous in you. We thank you we're strong in you. We thank you, Father God, we're made brand spanking new in you. And we thank you, Father, the old is gone and all of the new has come. And we thank you, Father God, all of the new is just like Jesus. The same glory, the same power, the same righteousness, the same thing that we have in the earth today Jesus that sits by the right hand of the Father has right now we enjoy this new life in Jesus we thank you Father God that we are blessed to be a blessing and we thank you Father God right now that you've made us worthy you've made us righteous Father God you've made us just like you for your glory in Jesus name everybody say it. Amen. amen glory to God praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah glory to God well, let's do the, y'all got one more? Will you have another one or y'all, we'll do it at the end. Do it at the end. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of y'all glad you're righteous? Everybody look at somebody next to you and say, you are righteous. I just like to get people to say it because sometimes you've been saying something else for so long that made it, matter of fact, it makes people feel bad when they say, well, you know, I'm righteous. The Bible says you're righteous. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You need to say what the Bible says about you and not what you feel and not what somebody else said. You might have heard a preacher say your whole life that you're just a sinner. You're just a sinner. Well, that don't make it true. Amen. Just because 100,000 preachers could stand up and say, you're all sinners. We're all just sinners. Well, Big Daddy, I got news for you. I'm not a sinner. Amen. 
I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And if I'm a sinner, I got bad stuff coming. Amen. But if I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, how many of y'all know that that is good, that's gospel good stuff right there? Amen. Hallelujah. Good news is I'm not a sinner anymore. Now, I'm not saying I wasn't one, and I'm not saying my flesh still don't like to mess up. But I am not my flesh. I live in my flesh. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you go to tell. See, you just got it backwards. You think because I make a mistake, I'm a sinner. Now the righteousness of God lives in me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody got flesh, and yours is going to mess up. Mine's going to mess up until Jesus comes back. But if you want to feel condemned your whole life, just keep on saying, well, I'm nothing, I'm a dirty worm, I'm just a little old sinner, say, I'm just a sinner, just a sinner. How about you start saying what you really are? You're strong, I'm blessed, I'm free, I'm redeemed, I am what God said I am. Hallelujah, I'm righteous right now, amen. I am just like Jesus. Amen, how many of y'all think we're the body of Christ? How many of y'all think that's a pretty big deal? He's not, the head is not in one seat and the body in another one. We're he, God sees you just like Jesus. Now, you may not see yourself that way, but that's how God sees you. Amen. How I many of y'all know the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, putting his word in your mind, and now you're going to find out who you were created to be. Amen. Wait a minute, I'm this. I says I'm strong right here. I sure feel weak, but it says you're strong. Amen. Is the word true or is it a lie? says you're strong. It says I'm healed right here. Praise God. It, the Bible says I'm healed. Well, that must, it must not see my body. It's just sick as it can be. Now the truth will change the facts. Amen. Amen. Fact is you might be sick, but the truth says you're healed. Amen. Now you hold to the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You don't hold to the facts. I hold to the truth. Amen. Glow, I might preach right now. Amen. That ain't even, I mean, it's just off that song right there. But you, go, boy, we sing, you know you're singing good songs when you can preach off a song. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Good to see everybody this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have a great message this morning. It's not a, it's, uh, get you shouting right there because you might not be shouting no more. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I used to do an evangelist type uh, calling on my ministry, and I would go around and I'd preach, and every time, I mean, I'd go to Kenneth's church down in Orlando, I'd go different places all over northwest Louisiana, and it'd always end up shouting, eating, dancing, people flipping and running around. Hey, glory to God, that was good. Well, when you're pastoring, sometimes you got to touch on things that everybody needs, amen? amen? And it's not always good to run around the building. Amen? It's not always good to dance and, and skip around. Hallelujah. Amen. Not always the best thing is to come in and just for us to be like that. Amen. We need the word, the truth that we take, we chew on. And we came here to do one thing, and that's to preach the word. Amen. Danielle said at dinner last night, we had date night last night. She said, you know what? We didn't come here for a popularity contest. I said, praise the Lord. I love my wife. Amen. She said, we're not here to please anybody. She said, we're here to do one thing, and that's preach the word. That's what we're here to do, preach the gospel, amen? People might like it, might not like it. I'm not caring what anybody thinks about me. I'm here to preach the word, feed the flock, and the people get strong, get fed, get nourished, and then they either do the word or they don't do the word, amen? amen. But I came to do one thing, and that's preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to preach. This is, say, good news. good news. Go to Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Luke chapter 1. Luke 1, verse 13. Luke 1, I believe, verse... No, it's Luke 16, 1 through 13. I deleted the chapter. I know it's Luke 16. Luke 16, verse 1. We're talking about... And some of you were here Wednesday night. We did a... We're going to do it a little different. Wednesday nights will be a little deeper. Sunday mornings, we're going to talk about the basics of stewardship. Say stewardship. stewardship. Amen. Sit back down. Stop dancing. Everybody gets so excited about stewardship, you know. Everybody, oh, stewardship. How many of y'all know you can talk about I'm blessed, you can talk about I'm healed, you can talk about I'm free, I'm this, I'm that. But if you don't learn to be a good steward over what God has given to you, then you can quote it, say it, speak it, dance about it, rejoice over it, but you got to learn how to manage the resources God puts in your hands or you will not see the greatest blessing in your life. I got to tell you that as pastor, amen. I know we rejoice and we shout around here a lot, but you got to become steward. Say steward. Steward, actually the definition is manager. Manager of resources. Amen. 
the Lord, and I, I cast vision with 18 wheelers. I cast vision with all kind of outreach material. But you know what? That only happens when we manage God's resources properly. Amen. And the Lord started showing me the recently all the resources that he has put at our disposal. And I'm like, glory to God, it's going to be good. He said, it will be good if you manage it properly. Amen. We're about to touch, and we've been talking about revival, regional revival, regional revival. This whole northwest Florida is going to hear about Jesus. And I don't know if anybody else is going to tell them, but we're just going to go out and tell them. Amen. That don't just happen, and it don't just happen because you shout about it or you amen it. It happens when we begin to manage what God puts in our hands. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 16, verse 1, says, He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a what? Steward or a manager and an occasion was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and he said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship. For you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, that I may receive, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him, and he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, I owe 100 measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and write 50%. Write it for 50 then he said to another, how much do you owe? He said, I owe a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write what? Eighty. So the master commended the unjust judge. Said you did a great job. Commended him. Patted him on the back. Amen. Look what he said. He commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light and that's a shame and i say to you make friends for yourselves by unrighteous money that when you fail you may receive that they may receive you into an everlasting home he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in what much and he who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in unrighteous money, mammon means money. If you have not been faithful in money, who will commit to you true riches? What's true riches? Revelation, wisdom, knowledge of the word, ministry gifts, all the things that, that's true riches, amen? True riches is not a million dollars. You can have a million dollars and be the most poor person in town. Without Jesus, you are poor anyway, amen? And it says right here, he says, if you can't be trusted with a little thing like money, who is going to give you revelation? How are you going to get wisdom? How are you going to get anything that is true riches? Watch this says, and if you cannot be faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and serve money. Say amen. You can't do it. He said it's impossible. You can't serve God and money. Amen. And we say in here a lot of times, I do not serve money. Money serves me. I do not work for money. Money works for me. Amen. But watch what this says. Go back up to verse 1. We're going to break this down. A couple of scriptures. Some of y'all here Wednesday night said, that's not what we read Wednesday. There's a lot in the Bible about stewardship. There's not one little old thing in there we pick out and say, look at what the Bible says. No, it's all over the book. Amen. And Jesus taught on it a lot. He taught on money a bunch. Say a bunch. Oh, Jesus was all over the place teaching on finances, how to handle it, how to manage it. If you don't manage it right, it, even what you don't have is going to be taken away. Amen? Watch what it says in verse 1. It says, there was a certain rich man who had a what? Steward. 
And on occasion, it was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. Underline wasting his goods. We're going to teach a balanced approach on stewardship because stewardship is not giving God everything. Say amen. Well, we, we get condemned in churches. We hear preachers get up, everything. You ought to give God everything. God don't want you to give him everything. Say amen. That would be a bad steward. What if you gave God everything and your kids were suffering? The Bible says take care of your family. Amen. Support your family. The Bible says that, it, that there's, there's a, a worse than an infidel who doesn't take, the, take care of the needs of his own household. So there's part of your finances that are supposed to be going toward your family. Amen. Oh, yeah, see, we think we're big. If I, I tell you what, I give so much. I give, I just give everything I got. That is out of order. Amen. I'm not a good steward over what God has given me if I'm not stewarding properly all of the goods. Say goods. Amen. But how many of y'all know you can waste the goods that God gives you? There is some thing, there's some things that we are to manage. There's some things that we're to take care of. He says, if you'll manage all these properly, I'll give you true riches. What if you were flippant? See, a lot of people think money's carnal. It don't mean anything. It's not a big deal. Seems like it's a big deal to God. Seems like if you learn how to manage it, he said you're going to have true riches. Say true riches. I just want wisdom and revelation. And now he's going to say, what have you done with the things I've put in your hand? Because I can't trust you with wisdom and revelation if I can't trust you with a little old $100 bill. $1,000, $10,000, $20,000, $100,000 is little to God. Amen. He says, if I, can ha if I can trust you with that, I'm going to dump true riches on you. Say amen. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Gifts, write this down. Gifts, talents, pretty much the same thing. There's some things we're called to be managers of. Gifts, talents, time, relationships, and finances. Gifts, talents, time, relationships, and finances. You are to be a good manager of these things. And you're not to waste the resources that you have. Amen. And I'm not saying right here that it is that being a good steward is abstaining from anything leisurely or pleasure. How many of y'all think there's a more scripture in the Bible that says you are to put aside some to enjoy for yourself? Say amen. Oh, see, people that steward, see, people don't want to hear this on stewardship. God wants you to have some leisurely time and some vacation time. Amen. See, and a lot of people don't want to go there. They say, well, a good steward, I'm wasting money going to day. No, I'm wasting money last night going out with my wife. I have to look. I went to a movie. I've spent a lot of money on a meal. It was good. Now, ribeye, something, something, ribeye, pork ribeye, all this stuff. Went out, sat by, down in the, uh, uh, the Destin thing. And you know what? You could say, um, is that being a good steward? Absolutely right, it is. What am I doing? I'm sowing into our relationship, sowing into my family, sowing into my wife. Amen? And God says to sow into our families. Amen? So part of your stewardship is to support and to give and sow back into your family. How many of y'all know we need to know that our relationships we have to manage properly? I have never heard God say you're putting too much time into that ministry. Never heard God say it, but I have heard him say, no, I've never heard him say you're putting too much time into your wife. But I have heard him say you're putting in too much time at that church. Say amen. Oh, see, we get out of balance real fast. And everybody thinks just because, you know what, that's pastor. I can call him anytime, do anything. And if I'm spending time with my wife, I'm not coming to see you. Say amen. Amen. I, I get with you later, Big Daddy. I'm with my wife right now. I got my priorities in line. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we got our kids. We put our kids way down the list. Your kids come right after your wife, not before your wife. And if you're going to manage relationships properly, see, it don't look good to your kids when you're talking to somebody in the coffee shop out here, talking to somebody about something that don't mean anything, and your kid comes up and wants some, a little bit of your time, and you say, go on, I'm doing something right now. Don't just something important right now. They're important. They're way more important than that person you've known for two weeks or two months or two years. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been in business meetings before here recently, sitting down with a lady about here doing some things, soap, toilet paper, this, that, and everything else. And I know Jake knows how to dial the phone now. Anytime I see home phone, I know it's not Danielle. 
Jake done memorized my phone number, and he goes, I know your dad is at 499 He's sitting there, dials my number. I'm not going to give it out to church. I know, find out. If you give it out to church too much, everybody call you. Just to see what you, hey, what's up? Hey, ain't nothing up. What's up? You waste, I don't want to waste my time. Amen. Amen. Now, <laughs> say amen. Anyway, I'm sitting there, and the lady's sitting there, and I'm sitting there, and I said, uh, the lady, we're going over this deal, you know. Got a deal going on. We're working a deal. All of a sudden, I see your home phone. I said, that's my boy. That's my five-year-old. She thought I wasn't going to answer. I said, let me get this real quick. Hey, buddy, what's up? Daddy, what you doing? I said, I'm talking to somebody right now. What you doing? Some people say, you know what? No, he could have waited. No, that's my boy. Say amen. That lady can wait. Say amen. What if you showed your kids they were important and you know how to manage the time that you have? And you know what? I, don't, that, I might not ever see her again. Say amen. But I'm going to live with Jake for the next at least 18 years. Amen. Well, now about now 13 and then he's gone. Amen. Amen. That's why also managing your relationships properly, you are poor and number one relationship is God. Say amen. And God includes his word. Amen. Say amen. Your number one relationship is God and his word. Say amen. amen. Not your job, not anything else. Your job is way on down the list behind your God, your spouse, your kids. Say amen. I told Danielle, I'm out with you tonight. I would prefer not to talk about living faith at all. Say amen. That's all we do. That's all we think about. That's all we ever eat, breathe, sleep. I say, you know what? Forget all that right now. It's me and you time right now, babe. Say amen. Just, just leave that where it's at. It's going to be there tomorrow. Amen. Let's just enjoy ourselves right now. You know what that was doing? Managing my time right. Managing our money right. Putting it into us. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all think you got to do this kind of thing too? See, a lot of times if you don't manage your time properly, and see, everybody's time management is different. If you're single, your time management is way different than somebody who's retired. Say amen. How many of y'all think everybody got the same? Yeah, we all got 24 hours. Yeah, but it's just a little bit different for you if you got four kids in your house and then you don't have any kids in your house. You can waste a whole lot of time by yourself, can't you? Say amen. Jesus said, don't waste my resources. Don't put them to waste. Amen. So what we have to do is learn how to manage all of the resources that we have been given. And like I said, gifts and talents, there's four areas. Gifts, talents, times, relationship. Gifts and talents are the same. Time, relationships, and finances. And we're not supposed, stewardship is not being a cheapskate. Say amen. See, some people say, well, I'm just a good steward. All I do is 50% off, 50% off. That's all I do. I'm real frugal. That's why all your stuff's breaking down. All you buy is cheap stuff. Never buy nothing good. Say amen. Being a steward is not always finding the best deal, getting all the best coupons. That's not stewardship. That's not managing your money properly. That is sometimes getting over into excess because some of the most frugal people I know are some of the most poverty-thinking people I know. They don't think they're going to have enough. Is why they really doing what they do anyway. I'm going to run out. i got to do this. I gotta, you know money's tight. Money's tight. Money ain't tight. Say amen. Man, I'm not in your depression, your recession. I am a child of the most high God. Amen. I'm not talking like you. I always got enough. Plenty more to put in store. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not doing it because I don't think I'm going to have enough. I am being a good steward over what I have because I am managing God's resources. I'm, I'm on borrowed time, I'm sitting on borrowed land, and I'm in a borrowed body, amen? And I've been called to manage everything God gave me. And he is going to say, we're going to give account over your stewardship. Have you managed your time? Have you managed your family? Have you managed everything that you have, including right on down to your money? Everything, we're going to give an account. Say, well, how'd you steward everything? I, how many of y'all want to be a good manager over what God gives us? See, at this church, how do I know we're going, we, we've already, I told the banker just out of a bold statement, three years from now, brother, we're on a three-year lease, but I want to drop you $2 million, I, I, and I said 2.4 because that's what they're asking, but I'm going to be shrewd, amen? We're not giving them that much, amen? We don't, we're going to do two, we're going to put a million in it before we get there, amen? So what I'm going to do is sit down and say, you know what, here you go, here's a check right here, 2 million, 2.4, whatever it is, we're going to write the check, Amen? 
I don't know. And you know what? Why? Because we've been managing properly what we have now. We're not afraid of a little. Say all that stuff's numbers and zeros. Numbers and zeros, and it gets people fearful. It's nothing but Jesus said little things. Say little things. This is little stuff, but he says the little things you have to manage properly so I can get you some big stuff. I mean, I want revelation knowledge flowing so much you can't contain it. You're like, glory to God, I got all this. He said, if you can't manage your time, manage your relationship, manage your wife, manage your kids, manage your resources properly, I can't get you real revelation. He says, if you wasted all that other, why would I give you something that you're going to waste anyway? Now watch this. Four areas of financial stewardship are this. There's four main reasons we steward financially. One, number one is to advance God's kingdom. Say amen. To advance God's kingdom. Number two is to support our family. Amen. Your family don't come before God. It comes right after God. Amen. And God says, I'll take 10%, and you can take 90, and you steward and manage that properly. He says, if you'll do that, I'll pour out blessing that you won't even be able to believe how big it can happen when I, when I get busy. Do it. But he says, if you'll manage it right, you'll see the goodness of God. Amen? Amen? Support our family. Leave an inheritance for our children. How many of y'all know the word says that we're supposed to leave an inheritance for our children's what? Children. How many of y'all think you're going to have to manage money properly to do that? Amen? How many of y'all can look right now and say, my kid's in a bind when I leave? A lot of folks. Amen. We're leaving debt for our nation right now. That our kids is they they're born they born in debt. Yeah. Watch this. Take a portion. Here's number four. Take a portion for enjoyment for yourself. You got ninety percent to support your family, leave an inheritance, put aside savings, and take a portion to enjoy for yourself. And then God says, "Give me ten percent," and that we're gonna call that money management right there. Amen. Amen. And every season is different for everybody in every category. To managing and being a good steward and a manager over what God gives you, everything is different. Your gifts and talents, there's a different season in managing them. Amen. There's a time to develop your gift, to develop your talent. Then there's a time to go use your talent. There was a time I laid on the bed and studied the Bible for 15 hours a day, every day, all day, read the book, speak the book, get in my room, get in my room, get in my room. But then I started finding myself 15 hours out doing the work. I said, Lord, I missed that time when you were in the bedroom. He said, I had you in the bedroom so you could go out there and preach the word on the street. There's a different time. You manage it right, but see, a lot of people won't do that part because all they want to do is go preach. You don't know nothing. I didn't know a thing. I would have went out there and said, but, uh, just, Gee, God, he's good. I had to get the word, put it in. I'm talking about years of doing that with no amens, nobody shouting, nobody dancing. Whoa, that was good. Nobody done nothing, but it was five, six, seven years of studying, tw 10, 12 hours a day. Put the word in, put the word in, put the word in. Put, be in managing your resources properly. And then he says at a certain, how many of you know God knows when you cooked and read it? He says, I know when I got something put in you, and I know when you're ready, and you know what? I'm going to take you out. And then he's going to take you out, and he's going to put you out there. Now, all of a sudden, you can go be a vessel. But if you don't manage that time that you have right now, see, a lot of people waste their time sitting around watching the news, watching TV, watching things like that. You're not going to be blessed with supernatural wisdom and revelation. <laughs> Amen? You might can stand up and tell us what Fox News said, but we really don't care what they said. You know, our, this and that, I, I can tell you about everything in Wall Street and everything else. They're not going to help nobody. All you go to work and even talk about is what's going on in the world. How about giving them, giving them the word? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, there's four areas right there. Stewardship, I wrote down the definition. This is all introduction for our Sunday morning crowd. Stewardship is to manage your resources, it resources in such a way to increase them for God's glory. How many of y'all want to stand in? You're going to stand in front of God one day, and the Bible says you'll give an account of your management of everything you've got, everything that you got. Amen? I'm excited about it, too. We've been handling up on God's business. Amen? What did Jesus say? I must be about my what? Father's business. Amen? He says he is here. He, see, Jesus was not just walking around doing messages. He was taking care of Father's what? Business. 
And Jesus preaches a message to these people saying, the world is more shrewd than the church is. Isn't it a shame that the world out there knows how to get profit and turn a profit and the church don't know how to do anything but come into the church, take up an offering, complain about the offering, and then don't have money to get the bills paid. He said, in the shame, it's a shame that the world out there is building new buildings, putting them up in three, four weeks, a month. You ride by, there's nothing there, land's cleared, putting up a brand new building right there. Just all of a sudden, you can give us, I rode by it the other day. I said, man, J Julia, Julia said, that, that Publix went up real fast, didn't it? I said, yeah, it did. Now, I don't know, there might be believers, might be children of God on that business. But you know what? How many of y'all think the kingdom of God ought to be in the shape to have a vision, put it out there, go put it up, and watch it happen real fast? Instead of believe for 50 years to get it done, we manage God's stuff properly, and we get to the place where, you know what? We're going to turn a prophet, see God blessed, and see the whole community fed by the Word of God. Amen. Jesus said, you know what? Children of light should know more about how to be blessed than the children of the world. <laughs> That's how Jesus taught. Amen. Amen. But we think money's carnal. It don't take all that. It's just a, it's just a little old thing. No, it's a little thing that God thinks a lot of. He says, in living faith, if you'll manage that, you'll be pulling out in an 18-wheeler real soon. I said, glory to God. It won't happen just because we dance. Now, we're going to dance. It won't happen just because we shout. Now, we're going to shout. But you know what we're also going to do is sit back here in offices, put down vision, put down finances, put down a budget, manage God's money, put it down and say, this is what we're going to do. Meet on this. Talk about this. Meet on Here's how it's all going to come to pay. Hallelujah. Ex say execute the vision. See, last week we danced about the vision and, and got excited about the vision. People were jumping up and down. I went and watched a video on YouTube. Oh, wee, 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 wee. Now we're talking about manage everything you got, and we're going to see it done. Amen? So the reason, what's the main reason people don't manage their resources is this. The main reason of, that people fail to manage their resources in every area is that they don't realize that it is not their possession. It is what has been given to them. See, you don't own your time. You ever heard people say, this is my day. I can do what I want. No, the Bible says this is the day the Lord made. Amen. How did you get your day? You talking about well, you want to do what I want to do with my day. It's not your day anyway. I work my fingers to the bone to make my money. It's not yours. See, there's the kicker right here. I tell you what, I did. I put all these years into my kids. My kids, who got you the kids? I believe the Bible says that children are an inheritance from the Lord. What if we had the proper revelation and we really realized I really am on borrowed time, borrowed money, borrowed land, borrowed every, and I'm about to see face-to-face -face King Jesus, my Lord. Say, Lord. Amen. And see, a lot of people want Jesus as Savior, but what we don't see him as is really Lord. Go to real quickly in your Bibles, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, and this is not for the, I mean, this, we, got a, we got a supernatural church here. My friends talk about our church. Man, that's amazing what God's doing down there so fast. I said we got good people. Amen? You don't have a good church without having good people. Say amen. It's not about the preaching and the teaching. It's about the people sitting in the chairs. Amen? Y'all are an amazing group of people. Amen? But how many of y'all know just an amazing group of people still need to hear the Word of God? Amen? How many of y'all think you need to hear things? Some things over and over and over. Some people sit there and say, well, I've heard that before. I wish you'd preach something I know. I'm going to say something you had never heard, and you're going to miss it. Amen? Amen. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the what? Word of God. Amen? I believe faith's coming right now. But that's not the part of the word I want to hear today. That's the part that God said you need to hear. He says, I wish you'd manage my resources properly. He says, don't waste my goods. Whose goods? Whose goods? Whose goods? They're not yours anyway. I tell you, God, he did, they want, he want, God wants my money. It's not your money. I mean, you get free real fast when you realize I'm dealing it with everything here is God's. Say amen. Everything I'm borrowing, I'm leasing, I'm on, and God has given me the goods and the resources to manage for him. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. 
giving thanks to the Father who has made us meet or qualified us to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Say, I've been delivered. I'm not getting delivered. I'm not believing for deliverance, and I'm not waiting on my breakthrough. I have been delivered. Say amen. Oh, everybody waiting on a breakthrough. You got TV shows, breakthrough, breakthrough. When are you going to break through, man? You already been delivered, amen? We still waiting for deliverance. Are you a deliverance church? I, amen, yeah. Because you know what? I've had people ask me that before. Call me on a, y'all preach deliverance? Well, yes, amen, I have been delivered. From the power of darkness. No, I mean, will you get me down there and holler and scream over me? And get everything. Yeah. Uh, will you deliver? If you need deliverance and you got a devil, we'll cast it out of you. But most people need to realize they have been delivered. Amen. I see the, the devil out there. The devil's done to your feet. Not a fear mongering church. The devil is far beneath, beneath you. Amen. And you know what I have to do? I have to be a good steward of God's word myself. Pastor here. Amen. Oh, yeah, i got to manage the word properly, amen? And I don't just preach messages just to preach them. Hallelujah. And some people get up, and they know how to work a crowd, work an altar call, pull a tear, jerk a tear, and fill up an altar and get people to holler. My job is to manage God's word properly to get you victory at your house. Amen. amen. And just getting you emotional don't get you victory. Amen. amen. Say, I have been delivered from the power of darkness. And he has translated us into the what? Kingdom. Say kingdom. Yeah. Of his dear son. Whose kingdom? His kingdom. His dear son's what? Kingdom. I have been translated into his kingdom. The word kingdom means king's dominion. I am in a kingdom now. It has a king and he has dominion over me. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. See, if you did not want Jesus to have dominion and control and rule over you, you should not have got saved. Oh, wait a minute. Now, I don't want Jesus to tell me what to do with my money and my time and my relationships. Well, go on and live for the devil again. Say amen. But since you've done come on over into another kingdom, you have to now say, Jesus is Lord. Woo! Say, Jesus Woo! is Lord. Lord. See, he's Savior for a lot of people. Not going to go to hell, but he's not Lord for very few. How many of y'all know we get the word Lord from the, from the term land Lord? How many of y'all know a land Lord purchases property and then people come in and use what was purchased? How many of y'all know we've been bought by the blood of Jesus, purchased by the Lamb of God, and God says you are God's property now? Oh, yeah, somebody, see, see, but we don't want to hear that because that means if I am God's now, I'm not my own. But Paul said, I've been what? Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, what? I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Now it's just Jesus using my body. Amen. I'm in a new kingdom. There's new ways to live now. And see, I did not get saved because I wanted to hold on to my old belief system, my old lifestyle. I said, if there's another way, I'll take another way. They said, you could be born again. I said, well, I'm going to try it again because I didn't like the first time. Now, I love my family and love all that, but I was in a mess and in a bind. Amen? And when I said I'm changing what? Kingdoms. I have now a king that rules over my life. Whatever he says, I do. Whatever he says, it dictates my life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every last word that comes out of the mouth of God. He is ruler, he is king, he is Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. Why do most people miss stewardship? They think it's your possessions anyway, and it's not yours. Say amen. How many of y'all think Jesus is Lord? Watch this. Go over here real quickly. We're going to help you on stewardship. Is it to help you if you realize, you know what? It isn't mine anyway. I didn't have nothing when I came, and God has just gotten me everything I got. Wait a minute. I'm being a little foolish here to think that I made all this happen because I know me. <laughs> I mean, I walk into this building. I'm like, God, you're happy. You, you did this. I'm going to walk into the next building. We put up humongous sanctuary. Lord, look at what you did. This is your place. Amen. Everything we're doing is God's business. Every relationship I'm in now becomes God's relationship. 
My kids now become kingdom kids. My marriage now is a kingdom marriage. Amen. Every friend God brings into my life, he directs my step, and I say, you know what? God brought that person into my life. That's a kingdom relationship. Amen. And you got to manage every bit of it properly. Amen. Look down here in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. What do you have to confess with your mouth? What? The lo say the what? The Lord. Lord. Say Lord. Lord. Jesus. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be ashamed. For there is no difference. No, say no difference. Black man, white man, yellow man, polka dot man, red man. Don't matter. There's no difference. Jew or for the what? Greek. You got racism in you, you're not going to be in heaven anyway. The white man and the black man. <laughs> you need to get saved. Amen. You need Jesus. Amen. Oh, yeah, I done heard it too. Boy, people can get in church and shout and do all this stuff. Next thing you know, they're talking about them people. Be careful. Tell me one time what makes you better than anybody. Because you can't tell me. I like to stop people real fast too. And they go, well, you know, you know they, them. I said, hold up just a second. Tell me, are you better than them? Well, you know, <laughs> but no, tell me real fast. Because some reason you think you way up here and they way down there. When without Jesus, you are nothing anyway. Amen. Say amen. amen. Racism is the biggest form of shallowness you have ever been around. Most shallow people you know are racist people. Thinking because of the house you live in, you better than somebody else. Amen. Say amen. We take it on head on too, Amen head on I would tell me I mean I got a freckle house right here what makes it better than one that's not freckled with brown skin we got brown skin we got white skin we got brown we got light brown we got red we got tan we got all the different colors of houses people live in you are not what you live in that is your house and if you was in, if you had any spirituality about you at all you would know that you know what I can't hate Ricky because I don't like the way his house looks some people say, I don't like them. They have a red brick house. I don't like them. I mean, they have a brown wood house. Can you believe it? That's what they're saying when they go to racism right there. I don't like them kinds of people. What are you saying? What kind are you? I'm off track bad. Say amen. Because you think Jesus was white, and he wasn't. You think Jesus was black, and he wasn't. So both of us going to be sitting there looking for somebody right in between. I mean, in between. He's going to say, Does, you, you mad I'm white? Now you Lord. Amen. You're not white or black. You are Lord. How many are glad you got Jesus? He is Lord. Amen. Not your Caucasian Jesus. List what you are. I'm Lord. Check a box what you are. Are you white? Are you black? Are you Caucasian? Are you African American? I am Lord. Say Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me go. I'll just stop right here. Yeah, because you don't go out and reach people you think you better than. You don't talk to people you've been talking about. Oh, Lord. Let me go. Hold on, Jesus. This is Jesus speaking right now. Not even me. How are you going to go preach outreach to talk to people you've been talking about? Oh, you sit up in your living room and talk about this group, that group, this group, that group, and then we say we're going to do outreach. No wonder you don't show up. Say amen. Where you at? Where you at? Come on, let's go. I ain't going to talk to them. I've seen it in 18 years in church. 18 years. I started preaching to white kid, black kid, white kid, black. Come from Louisiana. Louisiana. <laughs> and you know what? I had a guy come up to me and said, well, it's fine. We go out and reach all of them like that. But you know what? I don't want them coming to our youth group because my daughter's in the youth. Can I talk straight up? He's on the board at the church, too. He's on the board. And it didn't go good with me. You got people that have played you and lie to you right in front of your face. Amen? But Jesus is Lord. Let me, let me move forward. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. There is no difference to him, the Jew or the what? Greek, the same Lord over 
all, say all, all. is rich unto all that call upon him. How many of y'all glad that now he is landlord, he is Lord of all, he is the Lord who possesses everything, but now he is Lord of all and he's rich to all. He says, now, I want to be Lord of your life. I want you to come into my kingdom. But then he says, your father loves giving you the kingdom. Wait a minute. The same lordship, the same dominion, the same power, the same authority Jesus has. He says, now, I'm going to manage. Now, you have to manage and take rulership of the same power that I walked on earth with. Watch this now. That's a good thing about our land. Lord, he don't lord over us and keep us down. He's picking us up. I mean, I'm glad he said, I'm going to share my goodness with you, share my anointing with you, share my glory with you, share my power everywhere you go now. I go. We're in partnership now. I am Lord of your life. But if he's just your Savior, you don't get to partake of a lot of this stuff. He says, you got to call me what? He's, he said, I'm Lord what? Of all. Go to John chapter 3 real quick. John chapter 3. This is a, an introduction to stewardship. Because if you got this idea of everything you got is yours, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, you're not going to steward anything. You're going to do what you want to do with what's yours. But if you know he is Lord, what? Of all. If you know you are in his kingdom now, he's the king with dominion and control, and he dictates everything that I do. If it says it in his word, I do it. I don't argue with it. I don't debate about it. He just said do it. I just go ahead and do it. Why? Because he's Lord. Say, I'm Lord. That's what Jesus said. He said, I don't want to be this or that. I just say, I'm Lord is what I am. How many of y'all know that means he rules and he reigns over all? Whether you, and, and you know what? You can argue with him until you go home and see Jesus. But he says, I'm still Lord of all. I like what John said in John chapter 3, verse 27. We got off, man, how did I get off on some of what I got on? I'm looking at my tablet, I'm like, well, I believe every word. I always come out here and I say, Lord, none of, all of you, none of me. See, the Lord's more concerned about things we think he's not concerned about. Amen? John 3, 27 says, and John answered, and he said, a person cannot receive one thing. Say one thing. A person cannot receive one thing unless it is given to him from heaven. Say amen. Don't you love your Bible? Nothing. Say one thing. Not one thing. John said a person cannot receive one thing unless he received it from heaven. Everything that you have is now it is, the Bible says, everything you have received, you got it from God. Your kids, your job, your money, your promotion, your house that you think you worked so hard for, God said, I made a way to make that happen. The breath you breathe, God gave to you. Amen. You are the time you got. All I got is a day. You on borrowed time anyway. Amen. God set time in motion. He put it here, dropped you off here, and said, now, how about you manage everything that I've given you? John said, you know what? That man, right here, man cannot receive one thing. Say one thing. Well, that was my idea. Where did that idea come from? came from God. Didn't, see, you, we give ourselves too much credit sometimes. I'm managing God's ideas. I'm managing God's vision. The vision we put before you, that's not something we dreamed up. How dumb would I be to come up here and say, here's what we want. No, this is God's vision. And if you don't have a pastor that you believe is speaking for God from God, then you need to find one and get on up out of here. Say amen. Oh, pastor wants to do this. Pastor. No, God wants to do this. God wants to reach people. God wants to preach the gospel. God wants people reach, preach, healed, delivered. Amen. Not Pastor Roddy's vision. What's the matter with people? People don't understand. This is not God. This is not Roddy's church. This is God's church. I got a church back in Louisiana. All they say, that's Brother So-and-So's church. Brother Bar that's Brother's church. That's Brother's church right there. That's Brother Barnes' church. Brother Barnes' church. Wasn't Brother Barnes' church. That is, that is Jesus' church. How many of y'all think when you get to heaven, there's not going to be a bunch of different churches. It's going to be, whose church is that? That's the Lord's church. The what? Lord's church. 
So you know what? Even messages I preach, I'm not even, hey, I'm going to say, I'm going to manage what he gives me to say. If you got a problem with anything, say it. Take it up with him. Amen. Why? Because I'm here to manage his resources, his wisdom, his revelation, his word, his money, his people. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch what it says right here. John said a person cannot receive one thing. Say one thing. Get some revelation today. You, uh, you can't receive one thing unless you got it from God. Get that through your head right now, and it makes the managing things now easier. Wait a minute. Hold on. It's not mine anyway. I got it from God. Because most people want to, see, they don't want the responsibility. Because with this comes responsibility. There's the thing most people don't want to hear is I need to be responsible with what God gave me. Say amen. Now go over to 1 Chronicles. We'll stop here. First, chapter 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Stewardship. Say amen. Anybody ready to be a good manager? Take your time, your relationships, everything. Put it on paper and are you managing it or are you just hanging out? Say amen. Some of us, we're thinking God's going to bless what we're doing, and I'm just going to tell you, he's not going to bless what you're doing, how you're doing. it. Say amen. We're not putting any time into managing our resources, managing our time, managing our kids, managing our finances, managing our business, managing what we do. We're just showing up. Say amen. But that changes today. Say amen. How many of y'all want to manage everything just down? I'm, manage, I'm God's manager. Amen. I'm only going to be here a little while. Amen? I'm only going to be here just a little bit. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 29. I'm not going to read the whole story. We're going to come back to this in this series. First Chronicles 29, they're taking up an offering for the church that Solomon was building. And David, the father of Solomon, just gave a $1 billion offering to the church. Say one billion. Amen. David just gave the offering, and then he says, everybody sit down. I got something to say. I wonder what David wanted to say. Because David starts off in verse 13, verse, tw uh, verse 12. He says, both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. Watch this. When you know that God is giving you everything, riches, honor, and everything you got, how many of y'all think you can get generous with what you have? Because there is plenty more where that come from. Hallelujah. Watch David now. Here's why he could do this, and so many other people never could do it. Watch what he said. He says, Lord, you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand is to make great, and in your hand is to give strength to all. It's all in what? Your hands. Amen. Now watch. Keep reading. He says, Now therefore, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. Man just wrote a $1 billion check. And watch this. All of a sudden, next part says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? You know, after David gave that offer, he said, I gave this much, and I want to know how much you're going to do. You ever heard a preacher get up and do that? I just wrote, I wrote a check tonight for $25,000. i am just going to ask, what are you going to do? And we think that was big. David put a billion in the bucket. <laughs> what would you write yours for? I wrote it for $1 billion, and now I want to ask what you're going to do. Read the story. We'll go back to it in a couple weeks. But watch this. It says right here, But who am I, then who are my people, that they should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you. Woo, David had a revelation, amen. See, you don't get down about your money when you know it's not your money. The reason some of our money is messed up, we don't really realize it's not mine anyway. All you ought to do is look at your account and say, Lord, you got trouble in your accounts down here. Say amen. We get checks, we get bills come here. First one, first electric bill we got here. It was, it was five, six times what we were used to at the other building. I said, Jesus, you got some mail right here. And what do I do? I start saying, I praise you, you're Lord of all, you're ruler of all. And it says right here, all things come from you. 
You get the revelation today. It ain't. See, if you realize I'm just here managing what God gave me, everything I got came from him. My wife came from him. I could have never met her without God directing my steps and ordering my path. I need to manage this right. My kids, then I never would have because you know what? I never would have met her anyway because now that is God giving us these kids to manage for about 18 years and then he's going to hold them accountable. But how many of y'all know you got 18 years to pump the word into your kids? You don't let your kids do what they I just want them to be their own person, make their own decisions, choose their own choices. That's not being a good steward of what God has given to you. Say amen. God didn't give them to you to let them choose to do whatever they want to do. <laughs> Man, we're getting on all kind of stuff. Your kid, God did not put your kids and trust them to you for you to now turn them loose and say, be a free thinker, baby. Just go do what you want. No, we are kingdom kids, kingdom family, kingdom people, word people. Amen? Amen. Now, I like what he said. All things come from you and of your own we have given to you. This offering David just gave, he gave $1 billion, and he said, you know what? Of what you have given me, I'm giving back. How many of y'all think that's man, you can manage what now you have in your possession, knowing it's not what you possess, but it, it's what you've been given? And God says, why would I give you more if you can't manage what you got right now? Why would I keep giving you more money if you're not going to tithe on what I ever gave you now? Why? God said, I done put it in the book, wrote it black and white, plain and simple. Pastor read it, went over it, and all of this, and you want to argue with it, and you don't want to do what you want to do with it. He says, why would, I keep, why would I increase your finances? You know who God gives witty inventions and ideas to, and he gives things? He gives, he all of a sudden, you know what true riches might be? It might be an idea from God. All of a sudden, you're a giver, you're a tither, you're over and above, and you know what? I'm just believing. And you know what? It didn't say he's going to give you checks and money. He said he's going to bless you. He's going to open up the windows and pour out what? Blessing. Amen. What's blessing is his hand on your life. And now what you're doing, he's doing. What you touch, he touches. Where you go, he goes. Amen. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out. Why? Because God's blessing is all over everything I do. Why? Because I become a partner with God. Me and God, we don't work, I don't work for God, I work with God. I'm not pastoring this church for God, I'm pastoring it with God. Why? Because we become partners with him. He said, I want to be a 10% partner of everything living faith does. I said, come on in, Lord, you be 10% partner right here. Amen? So what he's going to do is he's going to increase our finances to where we can now be partners in everything that he does. Why? Because I know I am not foolish enough to stand up and get high-minded and say, look what we built. Look at the church we built. I didn't build it. Say amen. Didn't have nothing to do with it. This is God's idea, God's vision. I was there when he gave it to me in the living room in Shreveport, Louisiana. Say amen. I mean, I didn't even get the idea. God dropped the idea. This is God's vision, God's plan, God's purpose, God's resources that we are called to manage. Say amen. Everything you have, your wife, your kids, your relationship, your job, you didn't make it happen. David just got through being super generous and said, you know what? Everything I got, God got me. I mean, I know that's the coolest people to be around. That's the coolest people to be around when they, all of a sudden, they just want to talk, they want to brag on God. And now, see, David starts bragging on God. He could have got up and said, guys, you, I just gave a very big check. I hate, I hate going to church where people do get up and they want to brag about what they got. I tell you, I gave big. Yeah. Never say because it came from God anyway. I mean, I think everything you got, God got you. You're foolish to think otherwise because every believer that I've seen in the book said right here, it all came from him anyway. It's not my job to argue with God. It's my job to let him just be Lord. He's purchased me and I'm living in his house. Amen. I've been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. And now I'm just a resource manager is all I'm here to do. Hey, me, what's your job? I'm resource manager in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. What you do? Hey, me, how do you do? I'm just a resource manager. Praise God. Just tell people that. Now, what, what do you, what, what's your occupation? Resource manager. Praise the Lord. What you do? What do you do? I'm managing God Almighty's resources, the great I am's resources. Amen. 
And if I do it right, you're going to see something like you ain't never even thought you could ever see. Amen. If I do it properly, and if we handle this properly, as a tree, we're talking about executing the vision that God put in my heart a long time ago. He said, I'm going to bring the right people alongside to help. Now, when you start getting on a, 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 what we're calling a stewardship campaign, in two weeks, two, two and a half weeks, three weeks, we're going to put a commitment card out there. We're going to ask people to, the Lord's given me a vision on how we can drop $2.4 million in the bank's hands. Amen. Lord has already showed me how we're going to get it done. He says, if you'll just start working that plan, it's not going to come from just in here. He already told me, too, that it is in here. The plan is in here. But he said, I got a lot more ways to get you finances than just those people. See, because a lot of times you look around the church, you're like, Lord, you can better do it with these people right here. <laughs> he said, I can do anything. Amen. Say amen. Man, how many of y'all are glad God is big and he can do anything? And you know what? All you got to do is listen to him. He'll tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. You do every time. You, he says right here, he says, if you can be trusted with a little thing like money, a good manager over money, I can give you true riches. True riches. How many of y'all know at this church we want to we be spitting out true riches? We're revelation, wisdom, teaching people, growing them up in the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. All of our leaders should at least be tithers. Every leader in here that teaches in a classroom, if you're not a tither, you can't teach true riches. You're in there giving what you heard, Pete and repeat, and belching something you heard somebody else say. Say amen. But if you're a giver and a tithe, if you're a tither and a giver, you're open to true riches. Say amen. Then you know right then, my, we got, get back here and teach. You know what? I'm not a teacher. That's all right. You're a giver. And I know if you're a giver, then you can go bring true riches. Say amen. Oh, yes. Say amen. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Say it like you're happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, I'm a manager of God's resources. I am resource manager in the kingdom of God. Everything I have. God gave me. I am simply called to manage it. We are seeing mighty revival. Northwest Florida, we call you in revival right now in the name of Jesus. We will manage the word of God, manage the peace of God, manage the joy of the Lord, manage rejoicing. Let me stop right now. See, some people don't understand why we rejoice. There's a manager over this service. Understand this. A lot of people want to, I've seen people get up and leave. We're going to have tongues and interpretation if that's what the, the, re, the way the Lord goes is tongues and interpretation. Even if there's people in the, in the crowd, you know don't even believe in it. I'm not called here to manage a service based upon the people in the crowd. I'm called here to do what the Lord says do. Some people wonder why they rejo they're rejoicing again. I'm managing what God put in me to manage. And if you don't like rejoicing and it bothers you, you know what? I'm just managing the service the way the Lord said manage it. He said there has to be somebody that will manage it just like this. Amen? I just had to stop during the prayer right there and say that. Because you know what? We're not managing it based upon what the people in the crowd believe. Say Amen. Well, I just don't know if I believe like that. I don't know if I believe like that. That's all right. Amen. Amen. There's plenty. There's hundreds of churches around this area. Say amen. And you know what? Everybody is going to have to find one where the, the pastor is the manager of the service and he is conducting that service the way you agree. Say amen. Oh, yeah. Find somewhere you agree. I mean, it might be quiet. You might be looking for boring. You might be looking for real solemn not going to be here. Amen. We're going to do what God said do. If he said rejoice, shout, run around the building seven times and your wall's going to fall, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take off running and see. Watch them fall. Amen. If he says get up and rejoice right now, stand on that chair and dance like a wild man, you know what? I ain't worried about what nobody said. What am I going to do? I don't know what's going to happen if I do it, but all of a sudden somebody might just come walk in in right off the streets, get saved, delivered, healed, preach the gospel all over the world. See somebody that, look, that's what the Lord told me to walk in that church and there'd be a man standing on a chair preaching. God's real. Lord, if you're real, come into my life. Comes in, gets saved, filled with the Word, filled with the Spirit, power of God, goes out, and there's a next Billy Graham. 
But if I'm sitting here not wanting to manage what God really gave me, because I know God gave us the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why you don't, you don't, you don't shy away and you don't back down. Amen? Um, from the gospel. Amen? You preach the gospel bold in every area. In joy, in peace, in Holy Spirit, in finances. It's a poor preacher that gets up and gets bold and shy and timid when it comes to money. You need to quit preaching. Say amen. Well, guys, you, know, you don't have to give. You don't want to. I mean, it don't matter. I mean, God don't care. We don't care. I don't want you to feel threatened. We're taking an offering up, but, you know, everything else, bold. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now it's time to take an offering. I don't want to. Everybody close your eyes and write your check. It don't, don't nobody look around. Say Amen. I bet we go ahead and take up a big one and a good one and say, you know what? This goes to God. Amen? Everything God's given to me, we're going to be a blessing. Now, we've written the tithe. We're going to write the offering now. Say amen. We got an offering. We almost got, just last week, we took up an offering for our kids' class. We cast the vision for our kids. Put the kids' class up there, Tim. Kids' class on the screen. Praise the Lord. This is offering time. This isn't tithe. Don't write your tithe right now. Unless you weren't here before, then you can write it. We're going to take up tithe and offering. The Lord told me this, while you're doing your building project, this would be a great time to do tithes and offerings. Amen? So in your first one, I want to keep them separate too, James. I want to separate our tithes in the, in the room in here, and I want to separate our offerings in the room in here. Because the Lord doesn't show me. He said, if you'll do this, I'm going to cause blessing to come. Amen? And I want to see, see this offering time right here. Last week, no, 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 not that one. That's the youth room in the back. I'm talking about the kids' room in the back, back the, the next room back right here, the back corner. It's the one with the red and the gray and the gray, red and gray. Red and orange, red and something, yeah. There it is right there. This room right here, actually I did mistake a, a budget last week, and uh, I forgot to put the carpet, in, the, the flooring in there. I had a lower price on it than I thought. We are right at 60% on getting this whole thing finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just last week, just last week, to, took up, how many offerings y'all take up? One. We got generous givers. We, got, we don't have people going, man, you want some more money? No, they say, I get to give again. I get to be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Ties in what? Offerings. And God says that when we give those, he can be a blessing. Right back to us. Now, God don't need your money and we don't need you. You know what? This is going to get done whether you give or whether you don't. Let me say that right now. This will happen. Just no matter if you agree, don't agree, give, don't give, keep debating, don't debate. It's going to happen. Say amen. And man, I'm telling you, we're about to see every, and then all of a sudden you see this class happen, then you see the youth room in the back happen, then you see, all, oh, look at that, how'd that happen? We've just been managing what God gave us. Next thing you know, you hear something in the back of the church. What is that? That's outreach group. They're going out to eat. They're going out to preach the gospel. What is that? That's a, oh, I hear something. It's that pipes going up. At, where are they going? Don't they know we're supposed to be in? No, we're going to be the church. We don't come to have church. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Now, what do you do? Just man. Now, you do what God tells you to do is all we ever say. Always, and I would, if I were you, I would just do my very best. Amen. Manage your money the best way you know how to manage it. You've given your tithe, now write an offering. Amen. Amen. This get, go back to the kids' class. We call this done. We're going to speak to this picture right now. We call this broom finished, complete, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, right now that our kids will be hearing the Word of God, being taught the Word of God in an excellent atmosphere. We thank you, Father God, that our kids are ready to go to church. They want to be at church. And I thank you, Father God, the youth are in revival in this city. The teens are in revival in this city. The kids are in revival in this city. Why do we want the room? We want the kids. We're coming after the kids in this community in the name of Jesus. There's a revival in the young people in this community. Our giving right now goes toward the house of God. And we thank you, Father God. What we give, you gave to us anyway. So we just give back right now cheerfully, joyfully in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. Go ahead, brother. Praise the Lord. Take up the offering. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You ought to get happy while you're giving right now if you can. Go ahead, y'all. Yeah, praise the Lord. We, hallelujah. Go ahead and hit on the drums or something. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Stewardship. Stewardship. Big deal. Big deal. Not a little deal to God. You can come hear the word, amen it, be a deacon, all the different kinds of things. But most people, see, what you don't realize is over your finances, God just says, I would appreciate you just being a good manager of what I gave you. And if you can manage it right, he said, I'll cause blessing to overflow. Now, why am I preaching this this week? Because we preached the vision last week. The vision don't happen if we only talk about it. Say amen. Trucks, don't, trucks aren't free. Brooms aren't free. We're going from that room to the kitchen. We're going, this is going to be a restaurant when you walk in here real shortly. That's not going to be a fellowship hall. It's going to be a restaurant when you come in. Amen? And you know what? why? It's just going to be because we got a bunch of generous people in the church. Amen? Amen. And a lot of y'all know, very, 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 matter of fact, we've only done one series on finances ever. And the Lord said, you know what? Now you can talk about stewardship in every area. I mean, I want to be a good manager of your time, good manager of your relationships, good manager of your gifts and talents, and a good manager of your money. If you're a good manager of these things, God said, I can trust you with true riches. Amen? Amen. So what we're going to start doing, three weeks there, I want to see. By the, the statistics say that 20% of the people in churches do 80% of the giving. We're the, we're the exception for that at this church. We've got a lot of giving people. A lot of giving people. But it is simply being obedient to what God said. Amen. Amen. You've seen it in the Word. You read it in the Word. And some people say, well, that's old tithe. You took up the tithe while they go, and that's Old Testament. No, tithe was not just Old Testament. That's law. No, it wasn't law. The Bible says Abraham tied to Melchizedek 400 years before the law. So if, you, if we got any arguments, we need to know what we're really arguing about. Amen. Say Amen. Amen. So God just, it was, and why do we do it? Because God wants our heart. He don't want our money. Say amen. Glory to God. So what we're going to do, we we're going to, oh yeah, we're going to go out on this last song. What y'all want to do? Huh? Running? Yeah. Well, we might run then. Amen. We sing about running, we just run. Yeah, somebody looking like, what? No, we're not going to run. We don't do that every service. If you could stand very quietly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is just dismissed. If you could have a cup of God. There you go, hey. Hallelujah. No 
know you more and more Brother, we look beyond ourselves To your love, to your love Onwards we draw towards your life Desperate, we seek to know you more and more Brother, we look beyond ourselves To your love, to your love We are running After all that you are, we are running. Cause all that you are is all that we want. We're running. Chasing after all that you are, we are running. Cause all that you are is all that we want. We're running. Chasing after all that you are, we are running. It's all that you are, it's all that we want, Lord. Yeah, we're running race amen be blessed we love you we'll see you wednesday or sunday if you're not going to be there um so catch you later be blessed go meet someone you haven't met before praise god give them a hug